Welcome back to WRPL. It's the podcast where we talk about all the things we were watching, reading, playing, and listening to. My name is Ben. And I'm Steve. How you feeling, Steve? <laughs> uh, terrible, but yeah. excited to see it. It's been a bit. Uh, looking forward to talk to talk about movies and TV Hell yeah. and any other forms of media we might have uh, engaged in. Uh, it's Dune 2 week. Uh, finally, you know, a movie anybody should give a shit about coming out this year. It's been a rough year so far. Yeah. Uh, we've got, got a couple other things. Uh, I'm going to try to keep mine short and sweet because they're not really anything uh, important like any of this is. Sure. Did you watch SNL with Sydney Sweeney? Uh, I've watched uh, certain sketches. Okay. Uh, I always watch Weekend Update. Mm -hmm. um, even if I don't care about the host, I was like, all right, Weekend yeah. Update's usually yeah. always pretty solid. Mm -hmm. um, please don't destroy. Please don't destroy, of course. Yeah. Uh, but of the 12 sketches, I think I watched three of them, okay. including Please Don't Destroy. I, as I've said, am not a big fan of SNL. Not anymore. Back in the day... Actually, I'm like kind of like a cast to cast sort of thing. That they, they, they have their highs and lows, but I don't give a shit. But you know, call me a simp or whatever. But I hear Sydney Sweeney's going to be on, so I'm going to watch it. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I actually laughed a, quite a few times. Good. Uh, I weirdly went on Reddit because mm -hmm. uh, I was scrolling, and I think it was one of the like uh, main headlines on popular yeah. or whatever. Uh, so I clicked on that, and it was just like your review of the episode and most people didn't seem to care for yeah that. i noticed that i hey to each their own comedy is subjective but maybe the bits in the sketches aren't great but i think she sold it especially like the dog cheerleader one did you watch that I did not watch the dog oh it's one. like she's the hot popular cheerleader comes back to school sees that there's a new hot uh, athlete on the basketball team and it's Air Bud. That's, that's a good uh, good concept. Yeah, and so she's just totally throwing herself at this dog and everyone around like, you realize that's a dog, right? And she sold it. I really uh, believed it. Um, I I really like the Hooters sketch. Did you see the Hooters sketch? Uh, I did. Uh, the Hooters sketch, uh, the bow in a straight sketch, and then the police One of the sure. best. Like, uh, I mean, definitely the best of that episode. Bo bow and Yang being straight is incredibly funny. Is that Gina Gershaw? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, and right before the episode started, I turned to my roommate and like, how fast and how many times are we going to have references to her boobs? And it was like in her monologue. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, boom, there you go. And a lot of them you could say is, well, she's in, she's the hot cheerleader. Okay, Sydney Sweeney's hot. She's the hot Hooters girl. Sydney Sweeney's hot. But she did, like, the court case one with all, like, the 12 judges or whatever. And she was just, like, a hillbilly. The, the She did a hair or a makeup artist one at a wedding. And, you know, it wasn't played up for her looks. I, I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. Cool. <laughs> and she looked so fucking good in that Hooters uniform. And just all the guys are just like, yes, me, please, more. <laughs> Uh, How much did you make? Uh, $36. How much did you make? Uh, $42. How much did you make? Uh, $36,000. <laughs> Can we buy you a car or anything? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's... Get... I, the one thing I'll just say about the Hooters sketch... Oh, sure. Because I watch, I always watch Weekend Update first. I love that there was a callback to, to the, the owl. owl. Yeah, such a... Good, there was a lot of... Like, if you watch that clip first, you'd be like, what the fuck is he talking exactly. about? Exactly. There, there was a lot of, like, commonalities between some of the sketches, like... In Weekend Update with the Stingray saying Michael Che slept with her. And then you have Sydney Sweeney and a dog. That's like there's some animal fucking sketches. And, oh, God, there was another one. I don't know. I, I can't remember. But it's just like, oh, they're kind of, are they, did they find something funny and just say, let's run with it? It's too good to waste mm -hmm. in one one sketch. But I don't know. I thought it was, thought it was a pretty good episode. Uh I I only have one quick little it's not even news but thing I want to throw at you. The Borderlands trailer? Did you watch it? I did. What'd you think? Looks like trash. <laughs> it it yeah. looks funner than I expected it to be, but I think this cast is not good. Everybody seems like like this is the 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 C tier, not that they're C tier, C -tier actors, but you know, if you watched, uh, you know, if if, the, if Guardians went a different way and they cast a whole bunch of it, like Jason Momoa was supposed to be Drax at one time. Mm -hmm. What if they would have done that? This feels like an alternate universe where 
a different cast as main. Like, man, this would have been really good with X, Y, Z, but eh, we got these the, people. The instead. trailer was definitely designed to give off Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, 100%. It's, it's Guardians Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. that's all it is. Um, which could be a fun concept, yeah. but those are two movies I like. And mm-hmm. so I, on paper, putting them together makes sense. Uh, but I've never played Borderlands. Uh, yeah, the neither trailer I. did nothing for me. Uh, I don't know any of these characters. It just seems like beneath Kate Blanchett, but I'm glad that she's able to like take roles that are fun. She's not yeah. just doing tar all the time. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. whatever. Uh, she <laughs> doesn't he, always have to be in a Oscar winning film. Yeah, she, I mean, she did Thor, you know, she's not above it, but she's probably the best part of that movie. Of Thor Ragnarok? Her and, um, what's his face? Loki? No. Uh, <laughs> Matt Damon. Um, Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah, he had a cameo. Oh yeah. No, the grandmaster. Goldblum. Thank you. God damn it. What is it's like I get to this hour of the day and my brain just shuts off. And I'm it'll, this is a transition into my first thing. I started me and my roommate, we watched a, a game show. It's called The Floor. Mm-hmm. It was suggested by a friend of the podcast, Nick. It it's a very simple concept. You got a grid of nine by nine and there's a person on every square and they do a randomizer picks you you can challenge anybody who's touching your square on whatever topic you have chosen as your expertise so it could be like you know animals and food and state capitals and whatever and you get to pick if you win you take their floor spot and now you have more spots that are touching your spot so you have more categories you could stay up and keep playing. You could go down onto the floor and um, let it randomize again. If you have the most floor ple- pieces at the end of the night, you win $20,000. If you get all the floor pieces by the end of the, the season, you win $250,000. So you may think, oh, I'll stay up here and I'll go up, gobble up as much many spaces as I can, but now you're a target. Everybody wants to come after you because if you have 10, everybody else has one. Well, they just had to defeat you once, and then by the end of the episode, they get twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So there's a little bit of cat and mouse to it, and the the actual competition is really simple. So it's me against you, and the topic is food, and they show a picture of food. You name it. Go to the next person, <laughs> they name it, and it goes back and forth. If you say pass, it, there's a three second delay, so you lose time. Everybody has forty five seconds, and uh, then your new picture comes up. And if you pass twice in a row you're pretty much fucked your time goes just goes by and it just seems if you pass two three times you're so far behind the other person you know is just gonna win it but sometimes it does get get neck and neck and it it's a show that makes you feel real smart you're like i fuck it you don't you don't know what grapes are like one of the one of the first things it was tools and this woman was like, I'm remodeling my house. I'm doing it all on my own. This should be a piece of cake. The third th- frame that comes up was nails. And she said, screws. Nothing happens. It's still her turn. Uh, uh, pass. You're doing your own renovation. You don't know what a fucking nail is. And I get it. When you're up there, your brain blanks. You forget people. And especially names. You see someone and you're like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, shit. Emma Stone. You know, you can't sit on it too long. <laughs> Um, and, and it boiled down to the, like the last category was either fashion icons or international foods. And the guy's like, I, I don't know that international food could be kind of tricky. Cause if they go back and forth a long time, it gets to some, some of the weirder things. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, I'm going to go with fashion icons. I'm like, Are you fucking serious? How many, how many could you name right now? Just off the top of your head. Uh, I'm gonna guess six, but yeah. that's just a guess. And that's just a guess, and, and it's some of the our models, some are actual fashion um, icons. No, no, <laughs> um, designers. Designers, thank you. And this dude is just like pass, no pass, pass. So it's really embarrassing, and it makes you feel really smart. Yeah. I guess it's like if you're doing fashion icons, you're hoping it's gonna be just famous people you know. And like, oh, it's Rihanna, it's Beyonce. It's sure, but it was more Dolly designers Parker. than yeah. anything. Um, so it's, it's fun. Rob Lowe hosts. It's on Hulu. It's really, really simple. I just spoiled the, the finale for you though. So not, not worth watching, All right. uh, <laughs> but, uh, it's funny. SNL did a sketch on that last week mm-hmm. and, uh, I didn't watch, but I saw clips of it and what's his name? Shane Gillis. He yeah. was he was up there just like ooh I don't know pass and it's all these like black people and <laughs> and he just pass pass I did watch oh, that yeah now that you're bringing it up. I I love him uh, pass <laughs> and then I saw someone do a super cut 
of the actual show. The same exact thing. It was like famous facial hair or famous hair. And it was with their faces blurred out. And it was like Dennis Rodman. You could see tattoos in his bright green hair. Pass. Steve Harvey with everything blurred out besides his mustache. Pass. People are passing on some of the, like, I can understand when it's uh, like Harriet Tubman. Maybe you just don't know who that looks like. And it's an, an old picture. <laughs> you, may, you may not know Harriet Tubman compared to Oprah, but it is like statistically, if there's a black person on on, on screen, pass. These people were awful. But it's a fun, it's a fun little show. It, it, if you just want to feel smart, why, uh, that's the true key to game shows. Is I think some game shows have tried to like do this like high concept or like really cool, interesting multiple rule thing, mm-hmm. but it's like. No, it's just got to basically be a trivia game because yep. it's something people can play at home. Like the physical challenges stuff, like it only really works for Survivor and like Amazing Race. Yeah, like everyone wants to because it's like, oh, well, Survivor looks fun, but I can't do. You can't that. do it, but, but that's why you can you can play Jeopardy and home. Wheel of Fortune yep. and Price is Right and all that. You could, I mean, somewhat Price is Right, a Family Feud. Mm-hmm. It's the that user participation really definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the floor on Fox. What do you got for us? All right, I finished an audiobook. So oh. one of the reasons we didn't record last weekend was because I had to drive down to some state. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it was like an eight-hour drive there and a nine-hour drive back. Mm. Um, and so I was going to be in the car for a long time, so I was like, let me get a nice, beefy audiobook and listen to it like one and a half speed. And then mm-hmm. I'll just, you know, and I finished like, I was pulling up to my house at the last minute. Oh, it was lovely. fantastic. Beautiful. Um and it was Iron Gold, book four in the Red Rising saga. Oh, okay. Starting a new um, trilogy. I figured I'm not going to get to this book for a while because I have so many books that mm-hmm. are like, on my TB- TBR, as they like to say. <laughs> um, but I was just like, fuck it. I got a long time. I'll check it out. Um, I didn't like it as much as yeah. the first three. It, it's not bad. It definitely fits the world and feels similar, but... The first three books were all from, if I remember correctly, uh, Darrow's perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just his rise from humble beginnings into, like, the Reaper of Mars. Mm -hmm. And this uh, figure throughout the galaxy that his goal is to, like, take down the the hierarchy of the golds. And this is, it's now ten years later. um, And it's the, basically, he lets down an iron rain on Mercury and, you know... uh, that's no longer under the Ash Lord's control. And now the Ash Lord just has Venus. And he's like, if we take Venus, we're all united under the same banner. It's all good. And then, like, former allies are now kind of enemies. And just like, hey, man, you're you're a warmonger. Like, we can't just keep killing people. We need to, like, do this politically. And he's just like, this guy will not let me do this politically. And then it's just a lot of, like, back, uh, like backstabbing and twists and betrayals. And that's all fun. Um, <laughs> I feel like it kind of just loses some of its charm. And also... Audiobooks, I, I just can't soak it all in. Mm-hmm. And back to my original point, this has four different characters you're following. Okay. Uh, two from the original three books, and then two new characters. Is it one of his, his child? No. Okay. Um, so, obviously, you have Darrow, and his stuff is probably the most interesting, because it's the most kind of action-heavy, and, um, you know, you want him to get to his goal. And also, whenever he's teamed up with Severo, like, their back and forth is always mm-hmm. great, and Severo's just... You know, the friend you always wanted, um, even though he's kind of a nut job who loves fighting and killing mm-hmm. people. <laughs> um, but you also have uh, Lysander from uh, the last series, who was the Sovereign's grandson, who was just like a little kid at the end, and he's kind of taken under Cassius's um, wing, and it's like their adventures through the galaxy, which I don't even really remember how that all mm-hmm. ends up. Uh, there's uh, a our new red character who his family is like murdered by other reds because there's like the sub faction of reds who I guess kind of want to keep the status quo. They Um, love their subjugation. (laughs) Um, And so now she has to travel through the galaxy and, you know, make allies to, because she wants revenge, but also like she doesn't know how the world works because she's only ever worked in like the fucking mines or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And now she's like free and it's, she's not quite sure what to do. Uh, and then the fourth character was Clifford the Big Red Dog. Doesn't fucking matter because clearly I don't. <laughs> uh, but I enjoyed. It. I think I need. I will probably get the book and reread it because mm-hmm. audiobooks I just can't 
soak yeah. it in the same way yeah. and sometimes they're talking about characters and i was like i think i remember that name and other times i'm just like wait yeah. where are we how did we get here like someone's getting stabbed it's like when did that guy come out of nowhere that was uh, my biggest problem with the first three it was just like, like not even realizing certain characters were siblings because everybody has four fucking names like their common name and their more family name their their battlefield nickname and like wait wasn't that this person no that was this jesus christ you i think this is a book you definitely need to see those words yeah um all in all uh i enjoyed it uh i will continue with the series but this was definitely uh harder for me considering i Mm -hmm. I actually read the physical three um but book three of this i'm not sure if it's a trilogy or a quadrilogy okay um but the third book just came out this pat within the past year um so we'll we'll see I'll, i'll keep you posted okay i didn't finish a book uh, it's called Blood Meridian. I've heard this. this it's title. from uh, Cormac McCarthy. He uh-huh. also did like No Country for Old Men. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I tried to read this years ago because I heard like, man, this is a fucked up story. And I could barely get through it. I did not like how the writer writes. And I felt bored. So I stopped. And then my boss was like, hey, have you ever read Blood Meridian? told him no and oh dude you fucking got it let me tell you about it and he was just telling me all the like fucked up shit that the judge he's the big bad in this uh pretty much like the big he's like kingpin he's like huge he's pale and bald and he does horrific things uh and but he's also sounds familiar to what we're about to talk about (laughs) but he's also very (laughs) smart uh he knows things that he shouldn't know he's just like a savant but he's so he's probably just the devil. He's just so incredibly evil, and like buying a sack of puppies from a kid just to chuck him in the river, you mm-hmm. know, and that's very fucking tame for the things that this guy does. So I thought I'll do the audiobook. Maybe it will help. And no, it did not. Fuck this book. I'm not I, I can't get through it. It is so boring. And the author never says like he said, she said, they said anything like that. It's just a person says a thing and you, and you move on. And sometimes I couldn't tell if someone was actually talking, if the narrator was just describing something Mm -hmm. and things would happen so quickly that I I couldn't even absorb what was going on. And so I got about one thirteenth through it. I got like an hour in and like, I don't, I just don't think this is for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I, I tried to, uh, watch a YouTube video about why this character is considered the most evil character in in all of literary history, and even that was boring as fuck. But that's more <laughs> of the YouTuber's fault because he he was read a passage and then explain it. But he's reading the passage in such a monotone tone, and now that I am done reading, I'm going to tell you about it. And it's like, oh. I didn't even realize he was telling me about it. I thought he was still reading from the book. And so I just completely lost interest. Uh, If you care, look up all all the horrific things this (laughs) dude does. Like, Like, he gets away at the end. The the character you follow the whole time gets totally fucked over by this guy. Really, really brutal stuff. But I I just did not like how this writer writes and couldn't finish it. All righty. Well... I will skip that book then. <laughs> you sold me on not selling it. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, real quick. What do you think? Uh, did we talk about the finale of True Detective? I can't remember. No, we didn't. No. Uh, eh. No, I fucking loved it. Yeah? Absolutely. This is just under season one for me. Really? I think season one is really, really, really good. Not a great ending. Mm-hmm. Kind of a what fart of an ending. This is very good throughout and has a fantastic finale and so this puts it up over two and three a hundred percent really and and i think i'm in the minority because all i see is wow they fucking blew it in the end this sucks i will say they should have it should have been longer it it, it could have been eight episodes to really flesh out a lot of stuff but i love that i said there's no supernatural thing. It's a it's a red herring. There's going to be an explanation of why these guys died. Well, now, there is yes supernatural no. stuff, but it was just women marched them out and they died out in the snow. Mm-hmm. How'd the tongue get there? Who knows? How did a rose see dead people? Whatever. You know, you could have that. But the actual crime wasn't a supernatural right. thing. And I love that because they are like the t- detectives and they're figuring out a crime. This isn't Scooby-Doo or supernatural or anything. It needs to stay grounded. And, but 
you could have, you know, some chin scratching <laughs> thoughts afterwards. Yeah, I pretty much had a feeling that I didn't think it'd go as supernatural, but uh, just in terms of, I, I think they were going to allude to like it was the um, what movie am I thinking? Now I'm now I'm pulling a you. Oh, it was, <laughs> it's the um, I, I think I sent it in a different podcast, but the haunting of Venice or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it is a real crime, but there's just enough hint to where it's mm-hmm. like, am I open to the idea of the paranormal? Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a feeling it was going to just be like that, where you know you just see like a ghost or something. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe that's real. Maybe gives them a wink and yeah, walks yeah. into the light. Um, Thanks for solving my crime. I mean, this season as a whole, I didn't dislike. Um, I just think that it needed to be longer and I need to spend more time. Like I was wondering like why I care about, um, Pete's relationship. Mm -hmm. Is it Pete? Or I don't know. What's his last name? Whatever. Let's call him Peter. The young cop, the young cop. Yeah. Uh, why I cared about his relationship. I wanted more time with him and, uh, Jodie Foster's like adopted daughter. Cause like all the scenes where they were together, I thought were Mm -hmm. really nice, but Mm -hmm. like I didn't know enough about, well, like, yeah, we don't the, even know her husband at all. Yeah. Uh, the, the, her there's kid a whole, died, but... I feel like there is untapped potential for the protesting and all that sure. kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't like how the show just kind of threw in season one references to just be like, eh. Mm-hmm. I, like, if it led somewhere, fine. Sure. But it's just, oh, it was just to, like, fuck with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I knew the time as a flat circle was coming, Ugh, and I didn't. Eyes. And I didn't uh, know until someone told me, like, "Oh, you know that ghost that Rose saw? That's Matthew McConaughey's I father." Think I was the one who told you that. No, that was something someone at work told me because we haven't talked about it since yeah. that information has come out. That information was not available until after the show was done. No. Well, I didn't hear that. Now I'm telling. Okay. You. Uh, I think you forgot, but all right, maybe. Um, and it's like okay, and. Who cares? Yeah. But uh, Matthew McConaughey's mom's character, like all the shit that she did, like what was her purpose? Wait, like, Matthew McConaughey's mom is in this show? Well, she saw the ghost of her husband. and that's... Oh, Rose is? Yeah, Rose is. Oh, God. I, I just thought they knew each other. No, no, no. Oh, They okay. were lovers. And, okay, okay. You know, lived together. That's my husband. <laughs> so uh, it can be assumed, at least, uh, that's his mom. Uh, okay. Maybe it's his stepmom. Okay. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I like that they kind of went in a horror route. Like, that was fun. It was different than the other seasons. Um, But all the the ghost stuff, I think, didn't really amount to much. And it was just... uh, And her possibly dying in the end. And she's like, oh, if you want to go kill yourself, fine. But just make sure you come visit me in ghost form. It's like, don't let her kill herself. I mean, I know it's her choice or whatever. But Was was she dead at the end? Um, I think she was. Not Mills. But that seems... Weird, like she saves Mills out of the water, and then she disappears. Like according to when she's given all the testimony and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, she just disappeared, but we didn't get to see any of that. Seemed... I mean, when you see her walk out in the ice. Yeah, I thought it was just like more metaphorical than actual. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. I guess she did. Uh, uh, but yeah, I just I think it needed more time to settle. I think I needed more time with other characters. Oh, like. Uh, Pete's dad's character, like I love John Hawks, mm-hmm. he's great in everything, and then he had you like kind of get tidbits of him being a dickhead, yeah. And I think you should have had moments of like you kind of root for him because he is kind of a dope. Or I he, felt sad when his bride didn't. Yeah, show I up. did too. That. That's what I'm saying. Like you have him be a douchebag, and then you have moments that like make him human, mm-hmm. and you know he hits Peter, and then you know you have another moment where like I wanted them to kind of bond, even though that there is clearly tension between them, and I want to like feel that when he kills him it's like earned and he's like mm-hmm. really struggling with it but it's kind of just like well he's dead and i can lean up and then that's all we're gonna talk about it yeah it's like we there's no after effects of that really mm-hmm. um yeah it just kind of felt like it was just so rushed they were just well we just gotta get it out to the end so, sure yeah. that's my only thing i i need a little more clarification on is why was it when they 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 went to that abuser and navarro shoots him mm-hmm. and then they plan it plant it as a suicide and Jodie Foster even says I was so close to doing it myself Mm -hmm. why was that a falling out why did they fall out after that uh I mean it's probably best to separate yourself because you both committed yeah uh, but they seem to hate each other over it you would think that would have been a bonding thing of we need to show that nothing happened we need to show that we're best friends we're on board at the same time and if it was all an act, sure, that's one thing. But it's clearly not an act. They really don't like each other. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think 
neither one wanted to be put in that position. And like I said, you, you want to separate yourself from that because if you are best buddies and all that stuff, it kind of can, you know, how do you be, how do you stay best buddies when you just like watched your, uh, your, your <laughs> partner just like openly murder someone you're not supposed to. And then she's talking about, and it's also the, it's the faith versus science argument. Mm-hmm. She's a person of faith. Like I saw something there and all this stuff. I, I, does it necessarily work 100 percent sure uh, ben sure i mm-hmm. i don't think so uh but i am fine with it that's the least important thing i care about yeah. is like why they had a falling out and why they just yeah because it just do seems so many like, things in the season hey we went through this traumatic thing could you help me on this other crime no well fuck you then we're not friends anymore anywho i loved it Bring bring me some more. Actually, and they might have been more okay. I think it was the Annie K case yeah. where it was really just like, okay, I thought we were cool because we were in this together, but yeah. you're not going to att- even attempt to right. solve this. That case. could have been a little more clear. And it, it's isn't it crazy? Like season one was came out 2014 10 years ago it's been 10 years since that first season. Yeah, it's been 10 years and we've only gotten four seasons of the show. That's that's crazy. Every two and a half years or so. Oof. All right, let's move on. All right. Uh, I watched the first episode of Shogun. Oh, okay, I thought I showed you this trailer and you were like, that looks like shit. You didn't show me the trailer. I seen the trailer. We talked about it and I said, I don't care. I said, okay. Uh, I, you know, Ghost of Tsushima is coming out soon. I'm going to save all my, my samurai Japanese stuff for that. But I couldn't ignore so many reviews coming out saying like, this is the next Game of Thrones. You know, everybody says that. Uh, I was like, fine, fuck it. I'll watch the first episode. It's fucking great. I I really enjoyed that first episode. Yeah, I was trying to find time this week to watch it. Uh, and I haven't gotten to it yet, but I'm very mm. excited because, unlike you, when I saw it, I was like, that looks good. Yeah. And, and so, unfortunately, it's two things that I don't like very much. It's like Japanese culture, especially when it comes to, like, you know women's roles in society it's it's so narrow minded everybody's they'll die for their fucking leader you know they'll they're willing to murder they're kill themselves per, was it simpaku simpuku whatever it is seppuku seppuku or something like that yeah something oof so white cut that um <laughs> uh like just because honor and stuff and i i hate that honor and respect and all that it, it's ridiculous and then the catholic church ben hates respect no no respect is what is when people go you need to respect me you know because of who i am well i don't know who you are well everybody else does so you you need to show me some respect like fuck you you haven't done anything for me or they're extremely rude to you and like oh you need to show some respect young blood and it's like uh who? Who are you? You're being such a dick. Why do I got to respect you if you're not going to respect me? And there's a lot of that mm-hmm. in the culture. And then also the Catholic Church just on their crusade of making everybody Catholic. Uh, so two pretty shitty things, uh, but it makes for some good drama. And it's brutal. Like, there's three things. I'm not going to say what they are. Yeah, there, please don't. I, I, mean, I want to go in as blind as possible. There are, there are three things that took me by surprise. One is extremely violent and happens really fast. You don't see it coming. And I'm like, oh, damn, they went there. One is only implied. You don't see anything, but it's horrifying. And then one, you see it and you hear it and it goes on. And it is one of the most fucked up things I've seen on TV. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, so I, I highly recommend it. I'm probably going to watch episode two tonight. Sweet. Uh, well, speaking of uh, Asian inspired entertainment, well, mm-hmm. not really inspired because that stuff did happen. Uh, <laughs> but I watched the first two episodes of Avatar: The Last Airbender. Just two? Just two so far. I only get to do like an episode a day. Okay. Well, you said best. you were watching with your wife. I thought it was a, your nightly thing. Like, let's feed the kid if, and if watch one time, episode. Yeah. But sometimes my schedule and her schedule. Yeah. Was sure. just like, we're just tired. Yeah. Um, so only two episodes so far. It's not very good. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I've only watched the M. Night Shyamalan one once. Mm-hmm. But I would say it's certainly better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, because you're not condensing 22 episodes into a two-hour movie. You're mm-hmm. now at least condensing 22 episodes into an eight-hour movie or however mm-hmm. many episodes mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it's eight, yeah. Uh, so I think it kind of gets the vibe right. And sure. I think everyone plays the part well enough 
I just don't think the cast are very good actors. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of times where the show, like I think all the bending stuff looks pretty solid. Mm -hmm. It's like everything around them that looks really cheap, even though it's like super expensive. Like Mm -hmm. when they're walking in the, in the first episode, when then the, the water tribes hut area, it just Mm -hmm. looked like I can tell this is set on Burbank and Mm -hmm. and none of this is like actual. It just looked. And then when they're outside, they're like on the volume, Mm -hmm. you know, the the Disney's rear projection sort of thing. And like that, you're clearly not there. Yeah. Uh, the the effects get a little worse. There's a part where like they need to jump off of a boat and grab Appa, and it's you know a lot of digital doubles of them doing it, and it's very obvious. Mm-hmm. Even someone just like running up to the edge of a building, like, well, we, we can't film you against a building, so you're gonna pretend you're gonna run. Then we'll CGW, and it and it's very obvious. Mm-hmm. But I think the bending stuff looks great. Yeah, I think they did a good job on that. I think uh, Momo and Appa look solid too. Yeah, sure, um, but that's I don't think that's a hard thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's just everything else. It just, I can tell it's expensive, mm-hmm. but it still looks kind of cheap. I think it was $12 million an episode or Oof. something like that. Um, but yeah, I think my biggest complaint is just, I think the actors aren't particularly good. Yeah, they're, I, the adults, I think, the Fire Lord, you're, you're better with these names. Yeah, Daniel Day Kim. He's good. And, Uncle's good. Uncle uh, Iroh. Uh, I don't know his name, but Kim's Convenience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like When I saw that casting, I was like, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. That's a good casting. Uh, Danny Dick Kim. Uh, yeah, that's good casting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but everybody else is relatively young. This may be one of their only things that they've ever done. Mm-hmm. They haven't really gotten their acting chops, but they said, we need a small little boy who knows martial arts that we can shave his head. That's good enough. Because mm-hmm. <sighs> they, especially in the first episode, there is some emotional scenes. Yeah. And this kid is just not... I, it's like they could add digital tears or mm. squirt some lemon in his eye or something <laughs> but like there was multiple times like, i don't think this kid can cry yeah, uh, yeah but you know it's hard to do i have not i don't want to shit on a uh, little kid's uh <laughs> you know big break yeah uh but i think it's also it's always hard doing a live action show when there's kind of heavy adult themes yeah starring children like mm-hmm. hunger games does it really well yeah but, but they were all but, 20 but that was more of a uh um, that was more of a young adult series yeah. that lent itself to that, mm-hmm. where this is this is a kid show. Mm-hmm. So to adapt a kid show into a war thing is kind of a hard sell. Um, kind of hard to do, and I just think that also, uh, I'm so confused. And it, it, it's the same thing with the cartoon, how firebending um, uh, how kills it? anyone. or Because it's like, yeah, fire hurts. Fire sucks. But, but it just, it's like, it, it just, yeah, it just seems like whenever it hits somebody, it only does damage when the story needs it to. Yeah. Everyone else is just, oh, I got black uh, soot on my face. Yeah. It's like no one ever seen, or it's like getting punched in the chest with fire. It's like, it, does that do more damage? Yeah. Like, it, it just seems silly. Like, Fire Lord grabbing a dude and melting him in his own hands? That's cool. Mm-hmm. Give me that shit. But when they're just throwing fireballs at each other, it's like, it doesn't look like it matters. Because yeah. they're also like, smacking them away with like a stick or whatever yeah uh same with the water bending like i could understand a gust of uh, or a spout of water knocking you over mm-hmm. but it doesn't look like a lot of water it's like a bucket full a yeah. lot of the times and like i'm not falling over into a hut or into a cart or something it's and i think in the cartoon they can you know they i think katara maybe used water one time to kind of cut her way out because she was able to yeah of, they, they expect like, on it she and, gets better and better with yeah. her bending. um but, I mean, water's cool if you're just trying to, you know, push people or whatever. That's fine. Um, but how uh, earthbending doesn't kill everyone, everyone instantly all the time. Like, there's no, there's a reason that I guess they haven't fallen completely to the fire mm-hmm. nation. But the Earth Kingdom should have just conquered everyone ages yeah. ago. <laughs> oh, here you come with your boats. Let me raise the land underneath the ocean and trap you in or create such a chasm that a tsunami comes you should not be able to uh, take the the earthbenders. I do like like in the cartoon when they get them off onto a boat. Mm-hmm. I'm like you don't have They're any useless. Earth. Now you're useless. Um, let's see. What, oh, what was I going to say? Um, but I, it sounds like you finished it. I did. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, the first few episodes are the worst okay. of the season. It does get better. Um, one of the problems is when it gets to the end. It's like, oh yeah, because I, I've I've only seen the the animated show one time through, mm-hmm. one time through, and I was done. Never went back. Kind of wouldn't mind going back, but when you get to the end, it reminds you so much of the Shyamalan movie. Like, oh yeah, they did all this in mm-hmm. that movie. Well, it does look better, but it it's still like, ah, oh, 
I don't I don't like this. Mm. But it it gets good. There like the the episode where Zuko does the blue ghost get blue, the blue demon bandit or whatever. Blue, yeah. I think it's I think it's the blue bandit. I don't think it's the blue bandit. I think it's the blue demon. Or the, oh, okay. Or the, that's whatever. That's like the best episode. It's it's really good. Um I don't like how it's lost its joy. Mm-hmm. So in the in the cartoon Aang wakes up and he's just like, oh, cool. Let's go sledding with penguin otters or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And they just go have fun because he wants to be a kid. And he doesn't do any of that in this. Sometimes he'll you'll see him There's running no with kids. Yeah, they, they have to. But the, don't cut out the joy. Yeah. He, the burden of being an avatar is so heavy. We need to see him kind of reject that by just wanting to be a kid. And it's none of that. It's I, I got responsibility. I can't have fun. So that sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, at least in the episode two that I saw, you know, kids came up to him and they saw, he saw him playing outside, so he went out there. Yeah, and, and he did his little, little air thing. But there's there's hints of it. That's but, all you get of yeah. it. Like him and and um, Sokka and uh, Katara, they just don't seem to have any fun with each other. Mm-hmm. They're just you know the brother sister sort of picking on each other stuff. And by the end, like we're family. Are you? You just kind of like tagged along with each other. Did you really bond in this way? So you know, all in all, I'd say eh, thumbs up. I'm excited to see. I, my biggest bummer was, oh yeah, Toph doesn't show up until season two. Toph is the best character. I hope they don't fuck him up. Oh man, they f- Boomy. <sighs> I've seen Ugh, that is YouTube the, short. I was like, this doesn't look the makeup. Great. Yeah, there's even like a water tribe guy that they age up. The, the actual practical makeup effects look really, really bad, and they just ruin that character. Mm-hmm. He's he's fun in the cartoon, and you like him. He's obnoxious in this, real bad. But, yeah, I I think watching the Kyoshi Island episode and seeing the Warriors, I was like, oh, those look pretty cool. But then seeing it in live action, I was like, no, the Kyoshi Warriors look great. Mm-hmm. The, um, of the two episodes, the best costumes by oh, yeah. far. I, I thought they looked awesome. Everyone's costumes look really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they they did it right. Uh, now you know the the whole controversy with Sokka's misogyny is taken out. Oh, we don't want that. That's not a positive thing. But like that's part of his character is not thinking women can do these things, learning he's wrong, and then being an advocate for his own sister when people tell her she can't uh, bend. So it's the everything they take out just made it worse. Anything mm-hmm. they added in that's different just made it worse except for one thing that happens later with zuko which is pretty uh pretty interesting but they it's hard to adapt what people call perfection Mm -hmm. it's one of the shows that people said there's not a bad episode it's just great from beginning to end you're not going to make it better you're only going to make a worse version so you know just watch the cartoon fair enough so i have a thing I've been waiting all week to talk to you about. Okay. Can you guess what it is? Can you give me a hint? Cause, um, it's every time I say, I can't wait to talk to you about a thing, because you know it's something you uh, don't like. Oh, Jesus Christ. You watched uh, Walking Dead, Rick and Michelle. Yes. Uh, the, the ones who lived. The ones who lived. Fuck my um, <laughs> uh, You got 30 seconds. No, you're going to give me a little more time than that. It's not bad. It's just as fine as any of the other spinoffs, but there, I wanted to take off a couple of notes of things that maybe you give a shit about. Do you remember when Rick was taken out of the show, Junkyard Lady, I can never remember her name, but she's on the radio and like, oh, do you have an A or do you have a B? She says, I have a B. And then we never got an answer of what that means. And even in the spinoff, The Walking Dead, World Beyond, they mention A's and B's but never say exactly what that means. Well, we actually have an answer. A's are strong-willed, natural-born leaders, uh, people who other people look up to. Well, the bigger grand society of these, these other settlements, they don't want A's. They want people who follow the status quo. So she lies and says, Rick is a B, so he can get put in. Uh, and he's not happy with it. 
Every time he goes out uh, doing zombie stuff, he tries to escape, and they're pulling him back. Like, we're going to beat you into submission. Not, like, literally, but... I do know one thing that happens, because my parents uh, watch it. Uh-huh. Uh, so I know, I think, where you're heading with it. Okay. Go ahead. So he's out on a patrol, and they have to put, like, a zip tie around his hand yep. in order to reel him back in. And he cuts his own fucking hand off. Rick finally loses a hand. Something that should have happened in season later. three, season four four at the latest and then he cuts it off and then plunges it into a zombie that's like cooking on the inside to cauterize it kind of a kind of a cool shot um let's see let's see oh then they give him a fake hand and he's got a little assassin creed uh blade in it jamie lancer style okay. yeah yeah the hand no, like the blade but... sure yeah the hand is doing uh, they, they do. I thought they were doing a lost scene in this where it sh- flashes back and Rick and Michonne actually met each other in a park before everything went down. They kind of flirted. And this is just something that maybe they both forgot because it was maybe just a day before the apocalypse. I can't remember exactly, but it's it's not. It's uh, it's a fake scenario. It, it's actually kind of confusing. I'm not sure if it's something that's just in his head of like a man, I wish this would have happened or uh, something that they've actually kind of reenacted in their own personal life, like a little mm-hmm. role play thing. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I thought they were doing a lost thing, but no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And last thing, I mean, I'm not even going into the story cause you don't give a shit, don't. you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's just no, but- Rick's trying to get out. Michonne's trying to find him. And yeah, Michonne finds him at the very end. They're like in a helicopter, surveying a land oh there's some bad guys down here and this dude who's been trying to force rick into this you hear this like like something goes through the windshield and it's on his chest and it's like and then he just explodes inside the helicopter just guts everywhere and they have to land it and it was michonne that shot at the helicopter because she's actually fighting those people but then she you know sees that it's rick and like oh my god it's you you're not dead i finally found you so we'll see when i get home i'm gonna watch the new episode of that she would have been pretty pissed if she just killed <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, just searching for survivors like oh shit i, I yeah. killed i killed but it's it's nice seeing rick back uh he just kind of fell back into the the role like it was nothing okay so that's that's pretty much all i have to say about Walking Dead. <clears throat> Sorry, we had some audio problems. So if we were in mid sentence and it doesn't make any sense, tough shit. We're moving on. <laughs> did you have anything more, or did you have something to say about Walking Dead? Uh, no, I never have anything much to say about Walking <laughs> Dead. Other than it's cool that he finally get his got his hand cut off. Yeah. Um, but I finished uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith oh, okay. um, on Amazon. And I really enjoyed the show. Uh, spoiler alerts for everything, obviously. Uh, ends on a cliffhanger. Um, but I don't know who hurt Donald Glover, but he is <laughs> so great at arguing and making it feel it, it, like watching him in this struggling marriage uh, and them arguing at each other. There's like one moment where they like really kind of blow up at each other and say some hurtful things. And I was like, God damn, like it felt like I was watching two people at the store who like should not be having this conversation (laughs) but are just like saying all these saying all these things and uh they're just very very great actors and it's two people who like you wouldn't expect to be in this action Mm -hmm. show um but uh some great guest stars uh there's a pretty funny episode it's probably the worst episode but it's probably the also the funniest (laughs) um because it's a funny idea it's just also a little silly where ron perlman is basically playing if they had a child and he's acting up and how they like have to deal with him. And he's just, they're trying to give him medicine cause they have to protect him. He's an asset. Okay. And they're just like, come on. Uh, I'll just call him Ron. Come mm-hmm. on, Ron, uh, take your medicine. He's like, no, I don't want it. Ron, take your medicine, please. And he's like, no, I'm not want it. And then Don Glover's like, I'll give you a cigarette if you take your medicine. And he's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but it's just, he's an adult. He's just a, pretending to it's, be. It's Ron Perlman. And he's not pretending to be a kid. He's just acting like one. Okay. Um, he's not going like, Hey, I'm your child. No, 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 no. He, he is uh, a very bad man who, for some unknown reason, they're 
task to protect uh and he's just he just a little snot and uh <laughs> um and it's pretty clever how they incorporate like they're running from bad guys like they're getting shot at and he's just like i'm tired <laughs> like come on and she and she's uh trying to be supportive it's like come on ron like we need to hurry up and then don glover's just like let's fucking go <laughs> like this is a and it, it's just there's some funny stuff in there um he even pees his pants and they're like all right buddy i'll clean you up <laughs> do uh, they change him well, they give him, they don't, okay. like, he's not on the bed but okay. naked and they're putting underwear on him. Uh, that's, but that's why it's, like, silly, but uh-huh. they're, it's realistic enough. Um, and there's, uh, it's weird for a show to be about spies and have action sequences that are actually pretty well done, but also. That's not weird. That's pretty normal. Well, no, but it, it's really, what I'm saying is it's really about their relationship. It's more of a relationship show and how to how you want them to compromise, but how can you compromise in a world where you can't compromise on mm-hmm. like, cause you're constantly on missions. And yeah. what if one of you wants to have a kid and the other one doesn't. And if you do bring one in, like what will that do to your lives in this world? Um, so are they actually falling for each other now? Oh, they're like basically together by episode two. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I just enjoyed the show. Uh, I think more as it went on, and if there is a season two, I will happily watch it. Uh, but I stand by my previous statement from a couple weeks ago, where I just think like it's really good. But I think in the age of television we're in, it kind of falls short to like greatness. Like if this came out 10, 15 years ago, everyone would be like, "You got to watch Mr. And Mrs. Smith. It's good stuff." <laughs> where I think now, just kind of, it's a show that if you have free time, people will watch. Okay. Uh, I'll be real quick. Okay. One more thing. Let's get to our main topic. <laughs> All right. Last, uh, I want to give you updates on two games I'm playing. Oh, okay. uh, one, oh, you know, yeah, game one you know of and one uh, you might not. Uh, I started playing Helldivers with my buddies. Oh, God, I want to play it. So uh, it's Starship Troopers, yeah. uh, and it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, there's different levels, uh, di- different difficulties, and like there's times where you feel really badass, and other times you're just getting swamped, and you're just like, fuck, I'm gonna die here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, it kind of makes you nervous, and you're just like, oh, shit, shit, shit. And if you're by yourself, you can do like the uh, trivial or easy missions, but even the easy mission is kind of hard by yourself. Like, you really need people to join you. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 40 bucks. You don't have to pay to win. Like, you can uh, purchase money to, like, get different armors and upgrades, but uh, you are just you just level up and you unlock things on missions and you get stuff and it, it's just it's just real fun mm-hmm. um, and even playing with random people like you're all on the same team you're not versus anyone other than the the monsters or the robots and you just you have to complete the goal um, the only issues I've run into is I've gotten kicked out of a bunch of games in mm-hmm. terms of uh, my Wi-Fi is bad or someone else's Wi-Fi is bad so suddenly with my team of four they all disappear and I'm still on the planet <laughs> like it doesn't kick you out to where like if you're playing Overwatch and someone like gets kicked out you might take you back and you're like oh well i we didn't even finish that game okay. where like this will always keep you in the game but you're either by yourself or like you lost somebody okay. you know so there's been times where the the last mission i played it was all four of us we had 30 seconds until the landing pad or the ship came down and we got mm-hmm. on and then they disappeared and then everyone came in at the same time <laughs> and just murdered me i was so disappointed because i was i was at the end of the mission how long are the missions usually uh so there's like 12 minute ones and 40 minute ones uh, okay. um but really it's only 40 minutes to give you enough time if you want to try and do a bunch of different side objectives in okay. it but you could really do the whole mission in like 10 if you really wanted to okay. but if you want to um get basically money and medals to buy upgrades and stuff you want to do as much of the side missions as possible but it's also makes it more dangerous because mm-hmm. you're fighting way more bugs and yeah. um there is friendly fire so you can kill your own teammates it happens all the time mm-hmm. uh, i heard someone, like turrets people set up a turret and like they're not paying attention and just, just they run, run right, right, in, right, in, run, right uh, run right into it yep uh and uh you don't in games usually like let's say you have 100 rounds and you use 50 and then you unclip it and you put it back in you still keep that ammo yeah, you, you don't it, if yeah. you fire one round and get rid of that clip of ammo that clip of ammo is gone so you really like want to use it sparingly too yeah. uh which gives it it's just like a more realistic thing and really ups the stakes it's pretty fun okay. i recommend it yeah I, i've been seeing a lot of clips of people just so how's the war going for you oh, i can't wait to go and see my mom and then they instantly get shot no bro I saw one where it was uh played that Creed song. I think it's Creed, which is like uh, lay down and die. Do you know that song? That was terrible. <laughs> yeah, that, that was. Oh man, I ruined it. But a guy just had a. There was a whole swarm of bugs, and he's on this cliff, and he just 
jumps off it with a grenade in his hand. <laughs> and you don't see it explode, but just yeah. like the music. And I always want to do something like that. Yeah, I, I love seeing like someone's calling down like health or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they're luring this giant s- spider walking to them. Like, come on, a little closer. And then it just like lands right on the dude and mm-hmm. kill him. Like, oh, that's so amazing. It's good, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, what's the other game? The other game, obviously... Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been playing a lot more of it lately. Uh, I'm just trying to beat it at this point. I have, I think, like 120 plus hours into it. Um, Some of the highlights recently, I saved a uh, flying miniature elephant who is also the detective of the city um, (laughs) from getting sacrificed. Uh, I have to defeat the cultists of murder uh, who also happen to have like shape-shifting powers. Um, I robbed a bank and got like a ton of money and weapons, Mm. which was great. Well, I didn't I robbed it, but it wasn't like that was, wasn't my objective. It was oh. to get something in the bank. And then I was like, well, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to steal all this stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm a pretty honorable guy and, and I'm a paladin and I play very justly and I make mm-hmm. the right decisions. But I was like, I can't pass up all the stuff in yeah. here. Uh, I killed a, a, a witch, um, a hag, if you will, um, who appeared in Act One. She came back in Act Three. Uh, I. Pretty, this whole city is huge and you can pretty much walk into any building and it's either someone's shop or someone's house and they have missions like there's so much to do and so many things to discover and like you're going into the sewers and you know, apparently I have to find a, a dragon who may aid me in my fight against uh, the main villain of the story um, and, and it's just it's the most impressive thing I've ever <laughs> seen it, it's uh, I wish you played it and I wish you played games as fast as I do because yeah. I want to talk to you about so many things. And there's so many you can tell me whatever there's so many cool monsters and visuals and story elements. And that's a, I think there's things that would frustrate you um, yeah. gameplay wise because you do have to like toggle a bunch of different stuff and mm. make choices. Uh, but well, I'll talk more about it when I finally beat the game, mm-hmm. but I, it's just it's just a blast. If, so if, much cool stuff. If COVID comes back and we go into lockdown, I'll I'll do Baldur's Gate, but I don't think I'm going to do it before that. I started playing a game. I'm, I'm, I'm chugging my way through it. Uh, Jedi. Oh, what's it called? Jedi Survivor. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Um, Fallen, no. Fallen Order was the first one. Yeah, okay. So Survivors is. Jedi Survivor. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty fun. But uh, there, there's still a lot of the same things that I don't like. Uh, combat's hard as fuck. I put that shit on easy. I was, like, I was gonna ask, do you put it on easy? Because that made my playing of the game a lot more fun. Yeah, yeah. The first time I did so as well after a couple hours, and it's like this fucking frog guy is killing me so many goddamn times. I'm sick of it. This isn't fun. So from this one, from the jump, I put it on easy. And even still, I'm getting my ass kicked. It's it's a tough game. It's just it's it's bad Uncharted. It's uh, Dark Souls Uncharted. Uh, it's and it's unfair in some of the combat. Like, I'm fighting someone, and you expect me to block every fucking blaster shot that comes from behind me that I can't see that's interrupting my combo. But if I block it, I stop my combo, and then it gives them an opening to kill me. So, like, a lot of times I'm just running away and reflecting shots to kill the guys you know, trying to snipe me. Then I go after the big dudes. Uh, but even then that, that doesn't work. And and some, some of the bosses are, have been really easy, but it's just some dude with an electrical pokey stick that fucks me up. Uh, and you could do a lot of different weird jump. You could like double jump and dash. And then you also have like a little grapple gun. And so there's all these little mechanics, uh, but sometimes when you're clinging to the side of a cliff and you don't have no idea where the fuck you're supposed to go and like, oh, I'm supposed to jump over to the left, then jump forward and then dash. And like, I should be jumping left, right, up, down. You know, I don't, I'm not thinking in the three dimensions. And there have been so many times I'm just in a room and like, hey, go talk to so-and-so. And I'm looking around like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. This door won't open. I'm force pushing, force pulling. I'm running around trying to do everything. No idea. And then I look it up and there's a little marble in the wall that when you force push it, it goes around a track and then it opens the door. And like it wasn't highlighted. What a weird way to set up a base. Yeah. It, it, it was so, f- I was going around and around and around trying to find what I'm supposed to do. And because I just didn't force push right at that ball. And so there are some really frustrating things of, 
especially you got to jump from this and wall run and then you got to double jump and dash wall run from this and then you got to drop down and you have to like think on your toes and there are times i'm jumping out into nothing shit where do i go okay respawn to the thing do it again and jump to the left no where, where the fuck am i supposed oh no you're actually supposed to reverse you're you zipping down the zip line turn it around and then drop into this thing and so it can be really really fucking frustrating but I'm having fun, I, I think, uh, for the most part. Uh, oh, yeah. What my, my least favorite thing. You have like six stances, and you could only have two equipped. So it's like regular lightsaber, double-bladed, two mini lightsabers that you break mm -hmm. apart, uh, blaster stance. So you have a regular lightsaber and your blaster. And then uh, cross guard stance, which is a much longer blade, and you got the little uh, Kylo Ren side pokey mm -hmm. things, nice. uh, and you could like adjust them to go like point up, point down. Um, yeah, there's a lot of customizable things in this, uh, but but I, I want to play multiple, but. In order to switch your stances, you have to do it at save points. You mm -hmm. can't do it on the fly. So I've just been using the cross guard stance and then the two hand to hand. So I have like length and strength and then speed. And I can't remember what the other one was. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun enough. I don't give too much of a shit about the story. It's since it's past, you know, Darth, not like past, past Darth Vader. Like we're not focusing on the original trilogy or anything like that. So it gives us a chance to do more new different things. And it's not that interesting. Uh, the worlds are still big as fuck, like and frustrating when you see a thing. You go, oh, I got to do something over there. Well, you don't have that force power yet. So you don't get to go here. Like I spent all this time traveling up this mm -hmm. mountain to get to this thing and I can't even do it yet. So, so you have to use that map which is the best and worst fucking map on the planet really maps out every little thing, gives you little hints and stuff, but the control scheme to try to spin it around is like, no zoom out. Okay. Okay. You went out, but why did you go down? No, spin it to the left. It's really annoying when you can't see where the fuck you're going. Mm -hmm. Um, so right now it's like just a C I'm having fun, but it's pissing me the fuck off. Uh, and after, after a while of going in caves and realizing all that trouble to get to this thing was just different haircut, different <laughs> pair of pants. Like, oh, I don't care about this shit. Yeah. I need to get through and stop worrying about where does that corridor take you? And there's so many of them where you're like, oh, I bet there's a thing that down there. No, no. Okay. Oh, oh, if I drop in that pit, I bet I'm going to have a pretty big fight with something. No, just a pit. Just a pit. <sighs> so, so I'm very annoyed. But I seem to, every time I get a couple of minutes, pop it on just to get a little bit further. So I imagine it's pretty satisfying to uh, just use a lightsaber for any means. So you want to get to our main topic? Let's get it. All right. Uh, Dune two. Dune uh, part two. Dune part two. Yes. Uh, directed by Denis Villeneuve, starring everyone who's cool and hot in Hollywood right now. Pretty much. Uh, picks up right where we left off from the the previous one. Did you rewatch part one at all? No, I don't have the time for that kind of I, thing. I figured not. Uh, I did watch a YouTube recap, and uh -huh. as I'm watching, I'm like, oh, it's a good thing I watched this, because I did not remember that part. Because uh, I think when we reviewed it on this podcast, if I remember correctly, neither one of us were really blown away by the first one. I, I'm blown away visually, I like a technical marvel. I at my uh, letterbox for it, and I gave it three and a half, and I was like, oh... I don't think it deserves three and a half. It, I'm going to give it a five, even if it's not a perfect movie. It is still a really good movie. And I did rewatch it right before. And I'm glad I did. I totally forgot about the whole voice thing, mm -hmm. which is one of like, my favorite edits in that first one. Where he's just like, how dare you use the voice on my on my mother in her own house? And like, kneel before me. And it like quick cut to him falling mm -hmm. in front. I don't know. Really, really well done. Um but yeah, this is a movie, both of the movies are really well made, well acted, practically perfect, that I don't really care that much about. I I 100% agree. I, it, because I tried to read the book, and all of its lore is kooky, and, and I've said it before, things like with Star Wars, Jedi, Sith, Force, very simple terms to understand. The Quetzalcaterac? <laughs> 
It's like, oh, oh, they're talking about the worm. No, that's a different term. Okay, are you talking about the the space witches? No, that's that's also a different term. Mm-hmm. And so when he's doing his like big speech in front of the 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 crowd to rally everybody up, he's it's just all a bunch of gobbledygook. It just doesn't make any sense, and it's so silly sounding. But this movie does a really great job of making you understand it. Yeah, it wasn't lost. It just kind of sounds dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll just, I mean, I understand where you're coming from in terms of like, there's a bunch of names for, uh, just Paul really. Yeah. Um, cause he's got his, you know, the Paul Trades name and then they call him like the Mo- Moab D Moab mm-hmm. and the Kithrit Kachiku or whatever you just said. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. The que- Queen Sec Hatterack. Yeah, which like I think that. he was also was for a thing. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Um, but the Kachiku. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's just a bunch of uh, <coughs> yeah. There's a bunch of weird names, uh, <laughs> but and it also it's like here's a bunch of weird names. But also we'll throw in Duncan Idaho, yeah, and uh, Lady Jessica. Like, <laughs> uh, and hearing from Rick and Morty, him being infatuated with Jessica so mm-hmm. much, it it just makes the name sound uh, I don't know less yeah. cool. But it's fine. It's it just yeah. science fiction mumbo jumbo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought this movie was fantastic. Uh, I really enjoyed my time with it. I think the two hours and 45 minutes blew by. Mm -hmm. Um, Much like the first one, just uh, pretty much every frame in this movie is stunning. Yep. Um, And all the I, the the first movie had the problem of well we got to do a bunch of lore dumps because yeah. we need to get you to understand this world and how things operate because we're not and we're not going to hold your hand through mm-hmm. it we'll do our best but like yeah. you, you have to pay attention you can't miss anything um, where this like you said I followed everything uh, I understood who was who and what kind of purpose they served and I like that it expanded the world because we get to see um, I think we may have gotten to see. Uh, a little bit of the Harkon and Home Plan, yeah. the first one, but this is like we see the black sun that like sucks out all the color in the yeah. world, which is like so, so cool. So cool. Yeah. Um, because in the trailer, it just made it seem like, oh, they're just in black and white all the time, but it's like if they're inside, yeah, color exists. Mm-hmm. It's just when they step outside and just like the small little details of just, I don't know if this is in the book, but just, oh, well, we can't have fireworks because it doesn't show up. So we shoot like black ink into the sky yeah. with fireworks. I was like, that's, that's such a cool. fucking cool idea. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think a lot of times when you have to explain different things, it's kind of it can kind of slow the movie down. But them, like stabbing somebody and sucking out all their water, and how mm-hmm. they have like a pool of souls that they just fill. Like there's this movie's so like religion heavy, and mm-hmm. I'm so interested in their religion and how like how much they worship water. I still don't understand how they necessarily survive or like what they fucking eat, other because it just yeah. looks like spicy mud uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you never really see them eat much yeah uh, yeah i wanted to see more how of their get, homeland yeah how they get materials for things it, yeah because they say oh it's a like series of caves and we get to see some of it but that's one of my problem is everybody's a soldier warrior or a religious fanatic or priestess mm-hmm. where's the merchants where's the scientists and i i, I want to know did someone give them the technology to make the still suits or is that something they manufactured out of things they pulled from the ground? And if that's the case, like who's making the thumpers is, is it an export thing? Okay. They got to make it themselves, but how are they mining? How are yeah. they manufacturing? I mean, I, I, and I don't know the deep lore of yeah. Dune, but I imagine cause this is the year 10,000 and something 10,160. Yeah, or something. So humans have traversed space and yep. landed on these planets and cultivated them all. And uh, so I mean, I mean, I imagine they could have landed there and go like, we can't fucking live here. Mm-hmm. So another planet brought their resources, built them some cities or whatever. It's like, well, we need this spice. Mm-hmm. And so then uh, their religions and uh, just how you put humans anywhere, they're gonna find a new thing to yep. worship or mm-hmm. you know, society. They'll figure it out. Like people who live in fucking alaska in yeah. like really remote places like how do you fucking live here yeah uh but then did people find a way to survive mm-hmm. um, but we're not seeing people in alaska like living in caves and then also manufacturing vast know, technology vast technology to fight the the polar bears yeah you know? um but i have pretty much zero complaints for this movie I, if i have uh two it's um <laughs> that I, I don't like movies where pretty much every character is stoic and brooding. Like no one really emotes too much. And yeah. I know that's kind of like a thing with the spice, I guess maybe because sure. you're, yeah. 
you're seeing things and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we have no Duncan Idaho to like. Make yeah, jokes. and that's why I liked Duncan Idaho a yeah. lot in the first one because he was kind of a breath of of levity, uh, where everyone else is just they're so intent on their mission Mm -hmm. and uh even i like i liked paul and chani's relationship but at the same time it's not like it blew me away it wasn't super romantic but i I believe them together yeah um but you know i thought that relationship could bring some fun to the movie and some charm and like oh they what what happens if we have like a really dorky meat cute in the Mm. (laughs) in super space they don't really do that it's just like he's hot she's hot all right we should hang out Mm -hmm. um but just even like the light, the water of life is just cultivated from worms. I thought was cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and just how they, their whole society has survived is interesting. And mm-hmm. the South versus North and mm-hmm. all their, I don't know. It just, What's the, so second, cool. the that, second thing is I totally forgot what the second thing is. <laughs> uh, Cause I was watching, I was like, well, it's the acting, uh, the acting's, the acting's great. Yeah. It's just kind of boring when everyone is on like the same wavelength. Yeah. Although I thought Javier Bardem was probably my favorite part of this movie. Okay. Uh, just cause I thought he was great as sort of the, the main believer mm-hmm. of the prophecy of Paul. <laughs> um, I, I love how Paul would say, I'm not the chosen one. You know, See, the chosen one wouldn't say he's the chosen one. That means he's the chosen one. <laughs> it's like he'll use any, any anything to, to yeah. propagate this. Uh, maybe the second thing was just the, the name. I don't know. I okay. don't remember. Here's, here's the things. I Let's talk it through. Maybe I'll think about it. Um, I didn't like that. All the bad guys, the three main bad guys, they all die and they all just get stabbed in, in a bloodless way. Even the main fight, he just stabs them. That's it. Okay. Uh, I wanted to see him get fed to worms. You know, I want someone dangling from a crane. He's like, Paul, no, don't kill me. And then the, the worm comes up and he gets you get to see him go through its intestinal tract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just, I wanted more worms eating people. I'm glad we got a lot of worm action, mm-hmm. uh, but I wanted to see worms eating people. And the knife fight was good, but I think it kind of had just kind of a boring ending. I, I know it's PG-13, but, you know, show me some black blood or whatever. That's fine. Yeah, I guess the ending wasn't all that exciting, although like... But the I, ending of the first movie wasn't very exciting yeah, either. <laughs> but just him grabbing the blade and just oh, like moving yeah, across, yeah. it just it made my toes curl. Yeah. Uh, that I thought was really great. Um, but I thought the the choreography the choreography of it yeah. worked for me because mm-hmm. it was more long takes yeah. uh, than, you know, the quick cuts, which we could sure. expect from these two guys who aren't martial artists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I assume, I don't know what, what they do in their free time, <laughs> but I thought it was pretty well done for what it was. But that final big action sequence, I'm watching that thing. I'm just going like, I can't believe yeah. what I'm seeing right now. This <laughs> is, this is so fucking you drop cool. a nuke on your city. Then we're riding our armies in on worms. Mm-hmm. It's pretty, pretty great. Yeah. Uh, so that final battle sequence, although like quick, uh, I just thought it was a visual. Sp- it was it's like watching the the elephants in uh, Lord of the yeah. Rings just come, and you're just yeah. like, "How fucking scary would that be?" Mm-hmm. Uh, Did we know Anya Taylor Joy was in this? Because I feel yeah. like I think I, I heard, heard yeah, that she was cast as something, but then I didn't see her in any marketing or anything like that. So she's in yeah, one she's shot. In one shot. So how could you? And then and then when she sho- and then when she showed up, it was like, oh. Okay, I mean, that's smart casting to let's lock this in in case we do get another one. But uh, I I did not see that coming. It's funny. Oh. I watched the Furiosa trailer and then jumped in. This uh-huh. like, oh, she's yeah. doing two big sand movies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sandy bitch. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. What's... Performances, everyone was good. Uh, I was hearing a lot of Austin Butler. The hype was we haven't seen a performance like this since... Jared, uh, since Austin Butler and Elvis, <laughs> <laughs> since uh, Heath Ledger's Joker, no. and I would, I didn't hear any of that, but okay, I would, I would not say it. he's scary, yeah, but I don't think we spend enough time with him to be like, that's a fucking villain, yeah, he's scary because of his face, he does fucked up shit, he's instantly a villain. I, I, I don't know if it's a uh, trick of the audio that they've added to it but his impression of uh stone stars guard characters are like oh i can tell they're related just from their voice yeah. was really really great um, he loves his voices that awesome <laughs> butler uh so i thought he did a good job with that and i don't know i'm tired man i, yeah, I have no, that's good. That's- oh uh but score was great sound design like it's gonna win so many of these technical awards yeah. uh 
just I don't even know why, like just the thumping of that thing. It sounded awesome. The yeah. way the sand shakes and the worms mm-hmm. come sounds great. The, the didgeridoo worms sound voice of the Harkonnens and stuff. Yeah. Like that intro of whatever it said. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And even Lady Jessica's the voice voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, like all that stuff just really fucking works. It, yeah. It's fantastic. Just everything sounds cool. Yeah. Um, awesome Butler looks like a... Uh, an engineer from Prometheus mm-hmm. had sex with that weird creature from Splice. I thank you for bringing this up because I was well, I was looking at him in the home movie. I was like, this is the fucking character from Splice. <laughs> yeah, the sexiest person in the world. <laughs> engineer <laughs> having sex with Splice lady. Uh, yeah, I, I, not much to complain about. Yeah, like you said, it, it, it expands the world. Uh, I think it, the first hour is a little slow. And I'm like, let's fucking get to it. But then the last hour and 40 minutes zip by. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, expands the world. Every the direction's fantastic. Mm-hmm. The sound, the score, the performances, uh, the visual effects. And it what's also great about this movie is as visual effects heavy as it is, it's just so practical too. Yeah. And you t- you're on a world where they could have shot all these scenes in the same sand location. And I always felt like I was somewhere else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're just on top of sand dunes. And it's like, I, I know we're, we're somewhere different. Yeah. Mainly because the scene has transitioned. <laughs> but uh, it, it it made a place that could just be so boring looking, so mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. I, I was glad we got uh, the black and white scenes just to break up from brown. Uh, <laughs> so I'm hoping in the third one, if we get a third one, here's hoping. Everybody go see it so we can get a third one. Because it, it feels like it just needs one, one more chunk story to finish it off um yeah i mean i wanted to confirm so after this movie was over i was like let me just look up the ending of the book and this is where the first book ends Mm -hmm. uh and i think in the original movie they make it like it starts raining and now arrakis has got water yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um and i mean i'd be happy for a part three uh just because it feels like it, it definitely doesn't end in a satisfying way because mm-hmm. it's just like, no, no, there's more stories to come. Yeah. We don't know if we're getting it. I think we are just considering, you know, this movie is number 12, I think, on IMDb's top 250 right now. Yeah. Now, <laughs> give it a week. It will be gone. Well, sure. But I, I think it'll be on there for a while. Uh, not know. necessarily in the 12 spot, but it'll be okay. on the top 250 for a while. It's just people, they they when something really hits, it always climbs the charts so fast because everybody who loves it is given it the tens. And as time goes on, people can, this movie's not that good. Yeah. They dissect it and you know, they're forced to watch it by their friend. And so they got to put in their one score, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I hope so. You know, don't, don't tease on your Taylor joy if we're not going to get her. And that's going to be weird. If are we going to get a flash forward? So she has aged up, but Timothy Chalamet will not be aged up. So I wonder how they'll, work that or if she'll just be the spice makes him young or something <laughs> yeah okay there you go boom or That's... like the spice made her grow very fast and made him age slower Maybe. and now they're like okay. roughly the same age yeah. science fiction man you can write whatever yeah. you want i want to eat that spice man it looks good i'm surprised they don't have a cinnamon toast crunch crossover or something you know <laughs> or or you do like cinnamon rice krispies or something so it's small mm-hmm. and then you can see all the little sparkles and you get a little uh, worm toy yeah in there. yeah and, and like it's like you can even put spoon. it in oh okay i was gonna say you just put it in your bowl like at the bottom oh, and so it like kind of sticks up yeah, out of the yeah. cinnamon uh i i like to see that we got to see a baby worm mm-hmm. i i i don't know how they got it i don't know how they breed whatever but it was nice kind of yeah, as big it. as those things are do they breed just one or do they breed like 10,000? Yeah, I don't know. If there was 10,000 of these things breeding at a certain time, Ooh. it just seems like there'd, there'd be a lot more of them. But, but maybe they only give birth once every 100 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We gotta, gotta pop out a bunch. And I wonder how long it takes them to get that big, you know? Mm. Let's talk worm riding. Uh, that looks fun. Yep. Uh, but gross when he like pulls the little flat back and you true, see the little ew, that grossed me out. And because it never made sense to me. You have these little hooks in this giant thing. It's like you're an ant on an elephant and an elephant is not going to respond to an ant pulling on its mm-hmm. hairs. So even more like the scene from Lord of the Rings with the elephants, because it's just basically <laughs> yeah. we're pulling on its ears. On to... its ears, yeah. Um, so I'm glad just that one shot of like, oh look, a flap goes up, it can like breathe in the air or feels the the wind going and it knows what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And it's just like simple little filmmaking storytelling things that are just 
It adds so much to what you're doing. And then I can pay attention to what's going on and not sit there wondering, how does he control that worm? Yeah. But how do you get your whole fucking armies on a worm? You know, one guy jumping, that's one thing. Because I don't think the worms stop for you. You never see them stop. But do you just like pull so hard that... Like it's they rear like, up a little. And they're just and like, all right, man, like I'll chill for a bit. Yeah. And then How just, do you get Lady Jessica's, you know, caravan on top of that worm? Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I want to know how fast it's going too. Yeah. Like, is it going 50? Is it going 100? Is it going 200? Uh, I think 50 sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But still, super fucking cool. Yeah. Would I try it? No. Uh, Absolutely not. Yeah. If there was like uh, an indestructible like bus on top of it that I could like, sit in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then sure. Sure. But, yeah. If I had an Iron Man suit, I would do it. But then I'd go, <laughs> why am I riding a worm? I'm in an Iron Man suit. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have much else. Yeah. Just good, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, did everything right and better than the first, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just uh, probably wouldn't be surprised if this makes it on my top 10 of the year, just because... At least so far this year, yeah, and it, it, Donkey Do. Uh, and also, March is kind of like a stacked month. I know maybe you don't care about everything, but I think that uh, If is out, or is that like May? And I think Imaginary, that's too weird that we have two Imaginary Friend movies coming out in the same yeah. year. Uh, Kong versus God, or Kong oh, Godzilla. Don't make God, me watch it. There's a there is another trailer where you know when they they're running together mm-hmm. like buddies. Then Kong jumps up and grabs like the back of Godzilla and puts his feet on his side. So he's like riding the side of Godzilla. <laughs> it's only for a second, but it's so fucking cool. I can't wait for that movie. <laughs> Speak. I mean, I, we've talked about it on the show before, but uh, I don't think it's ever been this bad. I went to this movie. 13 minutes late mm-hmm. so the movie started at three i got there i walked got in there at 3 13 the trailers hadn't started and i was yeah. like that's weird but okay and then it wasn't until 3 33 yep that that fucking movie started the yep. first frame came up mm-hmm. i was livid we're now, already here for almost three hours yeah, you fuck like i think I, the worst i've seen is like 24 maybe mm-hmm. but over half an hour before the movie that said was going to start at three starts because you got to do 20 minutes of just like generic ads mm-hmm. or like 10 minutes of generic ads, 10 minutes of Maria action- Menudo's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 10 minutes of trailers. And then another five minutes or so of uh, just like regal ads yeah. just for regal itself. It's like, no, just fucking, can we start 15 minutes? I'll give you 15 yeah. minutes. You know, if the movie starts at three, you get three minutes of here's, Maria Menounos and here's the news and then you get 12 minutes uh, or 10 minutes of trailers because that's like four or five trailers mm-hmm. and then you get the the one regal intro the, the one regal intro you gotta that, introduce Pepsi too yeah Pepsi and Unlimited Club yeah what yeah that's why the I, uh the everyone walking in and doing lines from the movies mm-hmm. I didn't play this time it played it didn't play it hasn't played for a very long time Steve we've talked about this on the show Really? They got yeah, they got rid of it. It was like I think the start of fall last year they stopped it. No way. A hundred percent. Yeah. I don't know where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I just when when the movie starts at three, I leave my house at like two fifty, two fifty five. Mm-hmm. By the time I stroll in, last trailer, you know. Yeah. Thank God for pre assigned seats. This this sort of tactic would work. Back in the early 2000s, back in the 90s, when you had to show up early to get the good seat. Mm-hmm. First come, first serve. Now that we choose our own seats, I could, I could just spend time in, in my car, you know, listening to a podcast or whatever. I'm not going to let, like, I love trailers, but I don't love them that much to sit through so much yeah. bullshit before the movie. And they always come to YouTube before they hit the theater yeah. anyway, gener- yeah. generally. So it's very, that up. it's very rare that I come into a theater and see a trailer that I haven't seen. Yep. They, um, they need to stop doing that, putting them up on YouTube. And I know, oh, we get the clicks and the likes. No, you advertise it. See the new Iron Man movie before Dune. And people go, oh, shit, I want to see that trailer. Oh, the Deadpool trailer is going to premiere in front of Dune 2. Well, that's just going to add ticket sales. That's what they did with Star Wars Phantom Menace. Mm -hmm. It was put on before Wing Commander. So me and my friend for his birthday went and saw Wing Commander. And there was a dude in the theater who was like, how many times for you? I'm like, what are you talking about? This is our first time. Like, this is my third. I'd come here for the Star Wars trailer and then I leave. Fellowship three times. (laughs) uh, Towers twice. (laughs) Return of the King five times. (laughs) 
Uh, and so, and so that was the only reason Wing Commander got our money, mm-hmm. which is top five worst movies of all time. I'd love <laughs> to go back to it. I'd love, love to do a make me watch for both of us. Okay. Um, because we are, we only saw it for that trailer. So why aren't theaters doing that more? Take it. Don't put it on YouTube until it's after the opening weekend. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then you then then people are going to show up for this shit because everyone else is just going to get wise and aren't going to show up until 20 minutes later. And now all that was for nothing. So if you and, and, and now that three hour movie is three and a half hours long and it's in that theater even longer. You mm-hmm. get less show uh, show times. So it's really counterproductive. They totally fucked it. Um, fuck you, Regal. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if it's just as bad because I pretty much only go to yeah. the one theater by my house. So I wonder at other theaters, is it as egregious or are some theaters like, well, we still do 20 minutes, but we do not do in 33. Yeah, I, or, I, I don't know. know if it's still the same, but the place that we have an, a close IMAX, mm-hmm. they have like a policy. It's like two trailers done and then you start. So you better be fucking in there. Yeah, and that's awesome. Ugh, just one of those frustrating things. Yeah, because I imagine in... It doesn't matter. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. My brain is not working today. All right. Let's wrap this shit up. What's out next week? Uh, Dune 2. Right? Have you seen Dune 2? I gave it an A. Uh, what is coming out next week? Um, uh, I'm, I'm... Anyone but you, too. <laughs> um. Yeah, they're married now, and it's like, they're looking to swing and there's a couple that they don't like, but it seems like their only option. So it's anyone but them. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's that's good. Oh, it's Kung Fu Panda four. I never saw three. Did I see three? Because one was the leopard. Two was the bird. Yeah. Three is the all the pandas. It was the bull. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I see oh, and that? imaginary as well. It's a. Uh, Imaginary Kung Fu Panda. Might have to do a... This meets that. Uh, this or, meets that or something. Uh, we'll talk about Avatar. Oh yeah, let's talk about Avatar again. <laughs> Everyone wants to hear more about Avatar. Alright, well, we'll figure something out. Well, Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a ma- uh, Make Me Watch. Maybe we'll, we'll, I'll make you watch Wing Commander. Alright, all right. All right, we'll figure something out. Uh, there's even like an Adam Sandler space movie called Spaceman on Netflix that I've heard like, dude, music soundtrack's great. It's an awesome movie. And like, yeah. It's got Adam Sandler in it, though. I don't give that guy my business. I watched that trailer and I went, this actually looks okay. Yeah. But Ben's not going to watch it. I ain't watching I mean, if you force me, you know, I made you watch a ton of stuff, just like Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, I'll, I'll watch it. If you if you watch it and you say, this is something I want to talk about, I'll watch it. Okay. But uh, other than that, no. So, Sounds all right. good. Uh, ooh. <laughs> we didn't roll. We got to have it just for the records. I don't remember which one it is. So choose your fate. Ugh. Would you? All right. Well, this is how good of sleep Steve's going to get a two. I knew it was the other day. <laughs> a three. Yeah. Holy fuck. Okay. That may be the worst one. All right. Well, if you want to get in contact with us, we are at WRPL podcast at gmail.com. We're on Instagram, TikTok, uh, threads. And I think I got locked out of my ex uh, <laughs> account. So probably not that, but, you know, hit us up with all your questions, comments, and concerns. And uh, I'm Ben. And I'm Steve. And keep consuming. I think that was a terrible episode. That was awesome.